Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. We're on episode two of Free Dive to the Future. I'm so excited. <laughs> I really liked episode one. That was a really, really good start to the season, getting everybody caught up. If you didn't know who Ikuya was, now you do. <laughs> um, and just setting up the idea of how this whole college scenario works. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like high school where they'll have matches. It's just with other universities and other colleges. Very run with the wind vibe. Uh, and I'm sure that they're going to go to Australia and do an international competition, you know, so Haru and Rin can see each other and compete and spur each other on, you know, because <laughs> that's the plot, right? But I'm so excited for it. Um, so I wrote down a couple of the names of the new characters, and by the time I'm recording this, y'all have seen episode one. Um, I did have a correction to make, and I'm sure that you guys have commented in episode one uh, to correct me, so you all will already know this, but we have Shizuru. Shizuru, who is doing the any stroke, basically. We have Romeo, who is the new freestyle guy for Iwatobi. And then um, Kunikita Ayumu is the manager. She's not swimming, she's actually the manager. So I was like, oh, okay, so she's gonna take Go's place now that Go's a third year. I'm like, that makes more sense. I don't know why I thought it was co-ed. I thought that'd be kind of fun, but that makes more sense that Ayumu, it's kind of like Haikyuu where um, you Oh gosh, oh my gosh, Yachi is brought on by um, Shimizu to do the place of manager. So it's kind of that. And Ayu was so shy, and she says she likes chubby guys instead, and goes like, no. <laughs> so I really, really love it. I liked, I'm excited to see what Shizuru and Romeo's dynamics are. They look like just happy people. They look like, especially Sh Romeo doing freestyle, he looks like the opposite of Haru. So that's kind of funny. And Shizuru kind of looks like a more mellowed out Ray. So that's interesting, and he's kind of the opposite of Ray. He can do any stroke, so he's like, I'll just do whatever you want me to. So there's that. Uh, in Australia, there is uh, Mihail, the coach, who knows Japanese, conveniently. And uh, he's very interested in Rin. I'm assuming maybe he's like an Olympic trainer. And if Rin is a hopeful for the Olympics, then perhaps. And he speaks Japanese, so I wonder if he's going to try to recruit Rin back to the Japanese Olympic team. Kind of like what they did in IQ. Um... Whoa, that's spoilers. <laughs> I won't go any further. No, I won't go any further. Sorry. Um, spoiler talk. Um, but stuff happens in Haikyuu. <laughs> oh, no. Do I edit this out? No. Just just know there's spoilers. <laughs> um, basically, uh, in Haikyuu, there is talk of Olympics. Do I really spoil this? Oh, God. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, you can compete internationally, but go back to your uh, hometown, to your home country to be on the Olympics. Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna need to be quiet. <laughs> um, and then we have Sosuke's brother, Kazuma. Amazing. I love their chemistry. And then we get to know that on one team we have Haru, Asahi, and the oldest, Mikashiba, the captain from Samazuka. They're all on a team together, which is awesome. And then Rin's on his own team in Australia. And then Akuya and Hiyori are on a team. And they just happen to be at the same competition as Haru and all them at the little rookie uh, tournament that's going on now. And the episode ended with Haru stumbling upon Akuya. So, fun times. <laughs> I, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see uh, what comes. There surely won't be any free angst. There surely won't be birds of fate flying around and a faded confrontation under the trees. Surely not. <laughs> Maybe, you know, since they're in college, we'll upgrade the trees. We'll upgrade to something else. Like maybe a, a pond <laughs> or a lake or a hot spring or something. I don't know, guys. But I've got my bingo card. Uh, last episode, we already had five checked off. So who knows how many we'll get this episode. But I'm really excited. I like, I have liked episode uh, season three so far. Episode one was great. And so I'm pretty hyped to see what happens for episode two. So with that being said, uh, the episode title is is called a, a Promise on a Shooting Star. Hmm. So I'm really curious uh, what, what that all entails. I'm assuming a promise. It's going to go back to Haru and, and Akuya in some way, shape, or form because we've got to... We've got to catch the people that didn't watch the movies kind of up to Haru and Akuya's relationship. But for those of us that have watched the movies, it's just going to be extra review and extra like building to be like, yes, we realize Haru and Akuya, they were on the relay team together in middle school. 
Uh, Akuya mimicked Haru and copied him because he saw he was good, and now he's kind of made it his own thing. So I'm really excited for Haru to see that in action. I think that's going to be really interesting. But uh, yeah, guys, it's time for free, and I'm so excited. It's been a long work day. When I got home, I was like, no, we're watching free right now. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. So I hope you all enjoy this reaction. Uh, please feel free to comment down below. Please no spoilers. I'll try my best not to spoil other things. <laughs> But in the meantime, uh, let's start episode two, and hopefully my huckleberry down here will be a good boy. And we're going to start that here in five, four, <laughs> three, two, one, and let's go. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm sorry, but relationship with bird of fate ended now relationship with towel of fate has begun <laughs> i mean oh my god i just okay i'm here free we're only in episode two and you're already dealing out some angst i, I i've built up two seasons and three movies waiting on this in an ova you think i'm not ready for the free angst i am ready <laughs> Oh my god. Yes, please. So, okay. This was a really good recap episode of kind of starting days. Like, it was kind of like a starting days refresher. So if you did not watch starting days, you would learn that they were on, that Kuya and Haru and Mako and Asahi were on a team in middle school. I like the added detail that Asahi's dad is the reason why he moves all the time. Because when, when we get the thing of Asahi moving, I'm like, why'd he move again? He just came to Iwatobi. But his dad moves all the time, so that's the excuse. It's like, oh, well. And as soon as Asahi's like, I'm not moving, I was like, mm, you can't control what your parents do for their job. So you probably are, and that makes so much more sense. But the promise... So tying this back to Timeless Medley, tying this back to Take Your Marks, like, oh my God, the connections to the movies, I'm all here for it. But I I love the idea that Akuya, Akuya is kind of upset because yeah, they made a promise. And the promise was that they'd all swim the relay the next summer and they'd win. And Akuya, we've established, is a competitive, someone commented back in episode, uh, I think with Take Your Marks, someone commented in the comments that Akuya is kind of like, Haru and Rin put together and he kind of is Akuya is competitive like Rin but he's got kind of like that standoffish quiet personality like Haru but Akuya is very very driven and he's very focused and he's like I want to become good at free I want to compete against you Haru I see how good you are I want to be like that and I want to drive myself and it's motivation for him and so Haru's like yeah let's win next year and promise that we'll race each other whenever you're as good as me which is setting up that Akuya is probably going to race Haru at some point. I'm assuming like in one of these relays and he's probably going to win because Akuya, we've established this episode, is really good. But Akuya, Akuya has the competitiveness of Rin, but he kind of has Sosuke's loner syndrome where he's like, no, I can do this all myself. I don't need anybody. I can swim alone and win and that's all I need to do. And he kind of has Sosuke's like overworking tendencies. Like when he kept swimming in the swimming pool and passed out, I was like, yeah, that's exactly what Sosuke did. So you should probably stop that because if you haven't noticed, Sosuke can't swim right now. Or he can after, you know, a, a lengthy stint without swimming. So that's interesting with Akuya that, and, and it's kind of almost like a defense mechanism because he bonded with these guys and they made a promise, and then within a year it was shattered. Like, Asahi's like, I promise I won't be moving. He moved. Haru's like, I promise we're going to keep swimming and win, and then I'll race you. He didn't. He quit. And he quit because of Rin, essentially. And so, and he didn't want to let anyone else down like he let down Rin. So I'm going to be curious if Akuya meets up with Rin, because that's going to be a whole different dynamic, too. If, if Rin gives the Taka no Jitsu to Akuya, that would be really cool. Because as soon as they set up, like, Akuya's loner syndrome, I'm like, oh. And there was a shot of Haru when he, like, just looks at the camera like, first Rin, now so then Sosuke, and now we got Akuya. I've got the Taka no Jitsu's got to happen. <laughs> I, I love that, though. So it'd be cool if Sosuke or Rin had the conversation with Akuya. That would be really neat. I think that would be a neat kind of way to talk about that instead of Akuya and Haru. But but man, uh, 
could be looking at the shooting stars. That was cool. But he leaned in for a second. I thought he was going to kiss Haru. I really thought he was going to kiss him on the cheek. And I was like, oh, we didn't get that, though. We did not get that. So I'm like, huh. I, I don't really ship Akuya and Haru. They, they're too similar in personality. And I'm like, I don't know. But but for a brief moment, I was like, oh, are we going there, show? But no, he was just leaning in to make the statement. And I was like, oh, did you back out? Did you chicken out at the last second? Because Akuya does kind of have a admiration or an idolization of Haru, like to an extent, because he like copied him. He's made the stroke, the free stroke his own, as Haru said, but he very much mimics him. You know, imitation is the biggest form of flattery. And I, whereas Rin, Rin didn't idolize Haru. He admired him. Rin admires Haru. He doesn't idolize him. And Rin's never tried to copy Haru. He just kind of appreciates Haru and is competitive because of him. But Akuya kind of takes it to another level, which is interesting. So, so there's that. Um, I like the idea of this Japanese international invitational the, the All Japan Invitational, like everybody from high school, as long as they make qualifying times, can compete against college. That's really cool. I wonder if like in years past, that's how like Captain Megashiba got scouted and things like that by competing in those types of events. So as soon as they said that, I was like, oh, cool. That will be our culmination of how do we get Rei and Nagisa to team back up with Mako and Haru and them. And it's going to be through this Invitational. So I'm like, that'll be neat. And then Haru and uh, Mako can meet... Uh, Shizuru and Romeo. I like Romeo's originally from New York. Romeo's like the exchange student. That's really cool. Except he's moved to Tokyo, but he's born in America. That's really cool. Um, Shizuru is an interesting character. I love how soft-spoken Ayumu is. She's like so precious already. I'm like, girl. Um, I still can't get over Nagisa and how much he's grown. Like his maturity in this season already. I'm like, our baby Nagisa has grown up and I, I kind of like it. Um, and then Ray's just like, we got this. It's fine. We'll we'll converge with the plot eventually. I definitely get the impression already that Rei and Nagisa are kind of our side plot. And it's really going to focus on Haru and Mako. Which, in a way, is a little sad. Especially if you like seeing our four Iwatobi guys together. But that's kind of how it is in real life. So I'm kind of okay with that. Like, Nagisa and Rei are still in high school. And they're still trying to make their own way with these new students. These new teammates. And I like that... I like the bond is so strong between Mako and Haru and Nagisa and Rei that they're not angsty because they're apart. Like they, they know that each group has their own thing to do and they still keep in contact. Like Nagisa texting Mako all the time. Like they still keep in touch and communicate. But, um, but it's not like there's no angst there. They're just, their friendship is so strong that they realize even though we're apart, we're still communicating and we're still keeping in touch and contact, which is really, really cool. Um, this shady man in black that looks kind of like Dazai from Bungo Stray Dogs, our mysterious, uh, our mysterious coach that we don't know, uh, him and Mihail, we don't have his name yet, him and Mihail fascinate me. I wonder if they're like rival coaches, this guy and Mihail, the dark haired man, I wonder if they're like rival trainers for Olympic teams and they're like trying to find the best scouts and they're trying to compete with who can find the better scout and Mihail's found Rin. And obviously this dark haired man's trying to recruit Haru. So I'm like, dudes, what we doing? I very, very curious indeed. Indeed. Um Asahi. Okay, so we got an, a member of Ikuya and Hiyori's team, Terashima, which is funny because Terashima and Haikyu is uh Tsukishima's brother's name, which is funny. And so that's how I'll remember them. Um, but Terashima, the idea that he's the archer fish and he hates that nickname. And then also he's like, I didn't even get a nickname. I had to make myself a Marlin. I had to give myself a nickname. I'm like, so very Momo. Cause Momo is like the otter of Japan and uh, Asahi being a Marlin. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, <laughs> but okay. Okay. We gonna talk about Hiyori. <laughs> <laughs> this salty winch. I I am sorry, but OMG. Which, granted, Mako's like, are we kind of like stalkers trying to find a Kuya? But, you know, if you haven't seen someone for five years, because it's been like five years since they've seen a Kuya, right? So, end of the final year of middle school, first year, second year, third year, and now it's... So, it's at least been four years since they've seen a Kuya. So, it's been a while. If you were trying to track down a friend, I totally could see doing that. So I don't agree with Mako. I don't think they're stalkers. They didn't follow him to the shower room, unlike Hiyori. 
But, oh my god. Um, Hiori. Hmm. Uh, I've got my bingo card here, and we're going to fill it out here in a second. But the whole openly flirty with Akuya, we going to check that off today. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. Yeah, Hiori is so got a thing for, for Akuya. And not just a thing. Um, he's, he's very jealous. Very, very jealous and possessive. Um, which is curious. Um, because Akuya seems like he's like, eh, I don't care. I'm just, you know, doing my own thing. But Hiori is like, oh, no. And so I'm curious. I, I always get like this with antagonists, especially ones that, like, have very, very apparent flaws. And Hiori has a very apparent flaw. As Asahi says, he's a jerk. <laughs> so I'm very curious why. Why is Akuya a jerk? Is he just a jerk? I mean, that's fine. If he's if he's just an asshole, full, cool. That, some people are like that. Um, but I'm wondering, like, is there a reason why? Like, what's the whole point? Why is he so protective of Akuya? Unless he's afraid that once Akuya meets back up with Haru and them, that he's going to latch on and leave Hiori, which could be the case. Because Akuya, we've established, was very, very much idolizing Haru. So when they met up on the bridge, I was like, oh man, is Akuya going to... But Akuya is mad because, oh, you're swimming? Like when he said, oh, you, you competed here? Like, oh, you're still swimming? Huh? Like, you broke our promise. You left me. We didn't get to swim that in year and do the relay. So I gave that up because didn't want to get my heart broken again, you know? So that was kind of the implication there. And, um, yeah, Hiori's not, he's just trying to keep them away. And, and you know what? There's people in real life. I've had friends, friends of friends that have acted exactly like Hiori. They exist. And as also he said, they are jerks. Um, but ooh, ooh, this is going to be interesting. I I get the feeling that um, Haru isn't going to say anything to Hiori because Hiori um, Haru is too nice. Haru is not going to be like that. But as we've established in season two, uh, and also he was just like he's a jerk. But I don't see this going over with Mako for very long because Mako's part of that four that quad there. Asi's probably going to be like, you're a jerk. And Haru's going to be like, I don't like that. Mako's going to go killer whale on Hiori is my guess. And I'm ready for it. I'm so ready for it already. We're two episodes in and I'm already ready for it. I don't know, guys. Um, yeah. But interesting. So we're setting up a lot with this episode. Um, also, I've been told through other videos, and you guys have probably commented on this too, but the voice of Hiori is the voice of Bokuto from from Haikyuu would never tell, would never know. Such a different voice. But the voice of now, too, is the voice of Daichi from Haikyuu. What a different voice, too. Also, so much happened in this episode. There's a lot going on in these free episodes for season three, and I like it because there's a lot to talk about, but it, it makes the episodes go so quickly. I'm like, oh, we are already done. Um, the the moment of now and Natsuya, where now is just like, like hmm. I'm like, dude, Hiori could not be more obvious that he likes Akuya, and now could not be more obvious that he loves Natsuya. I just, I love it. I'm like, yes. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, so this bingo card. Uh, Hiori openly flirting with Akuya. Yes. Like, totally. Absolutely. Um, let's see. We didn't have any, we didn't have any Samazuka this episode. It was all, all about Akuya and our, our Iwatobi boys. Uh, let me see here. Gratuitous fan service of our free boys. Do we count Haru exposing himself in the outfit from Take Your Marks as gratuitous fanboy? -ing? I'm going to wait on that. Although I do find it funny that Ayumu remembered Haru as that guy. But Haru's ripped and Ayumu said she liked chubby guys. So that was a curious thing. Um, let me see. Akuya and Haru, Haru argue over who's angstier. We've not gotten to that point, but I have a feeling it's coming. Um, I have a feeling it is coming. Uh, Kasumi Kus hasn't gotten handy with anybody yet. I feel... I feel so... Oh, no! Now and Natsuya exchange loving looks! Yes! <laughs> and then, yeah, we didn't have anything with Rin this episode. So, we had two more. I'm getting close to a bingo. I'm not there yet, but I'm getting close. 
<laughs> oh man, you guys. Oh, this episode. This was good. And uh, Natsuya going to Australia. Hmm. I'm. I'm. We didn't get any Rin focus this episode, so I'm curious if we're gonna go back to Australia and catch up with Rin, and then catch up with Samazuka and see what's happening with them. Because uh, we didn't get Momo or Notori at all either, or Sosuke. So very interesting. But yeah, um, I I can see why a lot of you already dislike Hiori. I can so see it, but I'm like sitting here with my bag of popcorn munching, being like, bring on the angst. Bring on this. Because you know what we haven't had in Free? We haven't had a character like Hiori yet. We haven't had that just blatant jerk character. Everybody in Free has been like, we are all friends. We're going to hold hands, sing Kumbaya, and it's all going to work out. But adding this salty wench into the, into the, this salty wrench into the mixture, I just want to get my popcorn out and just be like, yes, Free. Yes, give me that towel of fate. Screw the bird of fate. Give me the trees. Give me the angst. I'm ready for it. I'm so ready. <laughs> but guys, uh, this, this episode got me hyped up. So I hope y'all enjoyed it too. Please feel free to comment down below. Um, please no spoilers. But yeah, um, next week we will come back with uh, episode three of Free Dive to the Future. Have a wonderful week. Stay safe and take care. And I'll talk to y'all again soon. Bye.